Oh, yeah, just first of all, like it's been, what, six weeks? It's been like really, really exciting for me just to support, you know, just the excitement about the program, just the end, the national brand of the end. Nebraska is just one of those places. Um, just really exciting and excited to be here, happy about it all. So with that, we can open up with questions. Coach uh, Sean Callahan, Husker Online. You were one of the first guys Matt Rule brought with him. I think you and Coach Collier came here first. Why were you one of the key people that he wanted to bring right away and kind of get things going with his job in Nebraska? Um, that's a good question. It's probably a better question for Coach. But uh, me, me and Coach Rule are pretty close. And um, I've probably been talking through him, to him throughout the entire uh, process. And uh, I just told him when he's ready for me, we'll hop on the jet and we'll go. And uh, he said, well, how about tomorrow? And we hopped on the jet, and the rest is history. That was six weeks ago. Was, the rest is history. You've known him about, what, 15 years, 17 years, probably. Um, yeah. what, what do you like about him as a person? Who? Hmm. Coach is probably, like, you, you, you may not even be able to feel it, like, if, from the outside, but he's probably one of the most, like, thoughtful, caring people. Like, Coach cares about me, and he cares about his student athletes. He's gonna care about his coworkers, like he, like, but deep care, not like the fake, like, bro hug type of stuff. It, it, it's like real, and um, you can see it. So those kind of people you want to be around. And he's also one of the brightest minds that I've ever been around. Maybe probably the smartest person I've ever been around. Hopefully I don't offend any teachers, my ex-teachers, anything. But yeah, coach, you you just kind of want to be around coach. He's one of those guys. Coach Warren Michelson, Channel here. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. <laughs> we have really like minds. We have the same type when it comes to like people and players and talent levels. Uh, it's really easy for me to be honest because just the program and the way that we push the kids. Really, I just need to find the kids with the talent to be able to do it, and they don't. They don't always have to look exactly how they, you know, how people think they should look. But if, if they have the talent, the necessary skills. Uh, the program would kind of push them to be great, you know, in the classroom and on the field. The field will take care of itself. Like, we just ask them to do a lot of hard stuff, you know, be 10% and So it's just really easy for me. And I'm, I'm, I kind of feel like I cheated because I got this reputation. And I, just, I just learned it all from coach. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so a lot of sleep is nice, a lot of, lot of film, and um, well, coach is probably always going to start at home, so a couple of the people that you, or coach had reference from our own backyard, so we want to make sure that we don't let those guys, the worst thing is when you see all these All-Americans and All-Conference guys and NFL guys from your own backyard and you miss them or you didn't do whatever. You didn't do your homework, or even you, you got out recruited sometimes. That's probably the worst thing. Uh, so it started there. I just tried to hit the ground running with the local guys and then work myself, work my way out. But yeah, a lot of sleep is nice. You know, coach calling me, me calling coach. You just constant communication about it. And again, I know, I know what he's looking for. I know what's been successful in one of his programs. So it's kind of easy. Yeah, when you say like recruiting pitch, I'm not sure we have like a recruiting pitch. Like, no, I, I completely understand what you're saying, but like those kids, they Google, you know, they, they say it themselves. Like they'll look that kind of stuff up. And if I, if I get asked a question, then sure, you know. But um, we kind of start with like Nebraska. Like this place is wonderful on its own. And uh, I believe in our head coach and the program and the culture and what he's going to do. A lot of the times, I just tell the kids, just honestly, like, we'll do as much for you as you'll end up doing for us because 
I've just seen it so many times. Like we've recruited players without much recruiting traffic and turned them in. Well, watched them turn into NFL players. You know, but so the pitch is good. I think the NFL has probably helped me out a lot. It's it's narrowed my my vision. Like I I I know exactly what they look like now. Like when when you walk in, if you ever get a chance to see J C Horn and just how he interacts, how he does his business, how he is all over the football field, all just studying and Dante Jackson and Stephon Gilmore and Jeremy Chin, those kind of guys, like, it makes it a lot easier. It helps me narrow. You know, I know what it looks like. So when I talk to them, I, I know what it looks like. I can help you get to it. But, again, if they ask me questions, I'll probably bring up the NFL, but not, not hey, how's it going? I coach in the NFL, you know. But, yeah. We have uh, Brian Christopherson with Husker 24-7. What's your early overview of what you already have here? I mean, the, the, yeah. looking at the tape, I don't know how much you've been able to do that. But what do you think you got? Well, I'm a film junkie, so I have. I have been able to do that. I'm very pleased with what we have here. You know, I think we have some NFL DB, DBs on the roster, guys that look like the guys that just finished coaching. Uh, I think we have a good blend of young players, inexperienced players, older vets, you know, mature guys, you know, guys who've been in programs for – four or five years. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited. Like, I love recruiting, but I just really, right now, I'm really looking forward to getting in and coaching. <laughs> like, that's like my first love. Coaching is like my first love. I just kind of know what coach likes, so we do the recruiting part, but I just can't wait to get to coach those guys. Like, I talk to Marquise Buford a lot, you know, with his situation, and we just always talk. We have like minds, so I like those guys. I love Gifford. I love him. Like, what, what, what's there not to like? You know, Quentin, those guys are great. Malcolm, we talk all the time. You know, it's a good group. It's a good group. They play some good football. They play hard. They play hard. They play hard. Just if, when you watch them, it's 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 pretty good for me because that's what the program is going to be based on: just hard work and playing hard and effort and toughness. And they have that, so it's been good. I'm excited. How's coach rule changed since maybe you know you first met him? Hmm. However many years ago to, to now, like how have you seen him sort of grow as a leader and head coach? Got a couple more grades. Probably, yeah. I think he's more patient now. I think early on he was just go, go, go. And I think he's more patient now. He understands like this it's a process. Like nothing happens overnight. I think that's probably the biggest area of growth that I've seen from him. He's more confident in just the overall process, the what's gonna happen. It may not happen overnight, but it'll happen. He's, he's done it too many times for it, you know. He has his system. We have our beliefs, our core beliefs. That's probably that. Just more patient. Yeah. Are you, uh, you going to coach the secondary, all of it, or is there going to be a safeties coach? Or, yeah. I know there's changes going on with analysts being able yeah. to help, so maybe that will come into play. But are you just the whole secondary? Yeah, you know, yes. Yes, I'm the secondary coach, yes, to answer your question. Um, sometimes we'll need to break up. You know, sometimes we'll need to. I take the corners or this week and next week I take the safeties, you know, because individualized, it's not the same exact position. It's a similar position group, but it's not the same exact position. So, yeah, I'll have help. But, yes, on the secondary, yes. I have the entire secondary. Hey, Evan, uh, Evan Blank, Omaha. World How's it going? I, I Good name. Likewise. <laughs> I've heard your reputation as, a, as a NFL draft guy. Can you describe kind of how deep that is, how intense that is? Quite honestly, like, I have a football family. Like, my grandmother knows football. Like, my father played football. My uncle played football. Like, it, it just is what my aunt, she knows the game. So I've always watched and kind of, like, made, dis not decisions, but made evaluations of the players that I've watched. I can remember drawing up, like, all the way back to, like, eight years old, just writing scouting reports. And as, it, as I got older, it got a little bit more, you know, Specific, detail, that kind of stuff. But I just, I'm like a junkie. I, I kind of wanted to be like Mel Kiper. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, and then I just fell in love with coaching. And in college, it's like you, you, you do both. So it's a good fit for me. Fortunately, in the NFL, I was able to do both. They gave me an opportunity where I could coach and be an evaluator. So that was a good experience for me. But yeah. How, how much of that passion then sort of overlaps with your duties now? What do you mean? Yeah. 
Well, it takes a lot of my time. I like I watch a lot of football. I, I watch a lot of recruit uh, film. I watch a lot of game tape. All 22. I just watch a lot of football. I love football, so it's all it's been all good for me. You talked about uh, Steve Sipple, by the way, from Husker Online. Yeah. You talked about your secondary and what you saw, your initial impressions. What about the entire defense? And what what were your initial impressions? Of what you saw on your side of the ball? Yeah. Well. Again, they play hard. We play hard. You know, we, we, we will have to work on some things, just like every other team in the country. We'll work. We'll work. Uh, but then I see them in person is we have a big team. Like, I'm not really used to, like, the defense alignment that we have. And the, the, the secondary, I have some really long DBs. So it's encouraging. You know, they, I think they're built. We are built the right way. So big athletic guys. We just got to work on a few things, work on the defense, learn the scheme. That kind of stuff, but yeah, I, I'm excited about it. I think we have a chance to have, when we have good players, we have a chance to be good. What I believe your, that. What was your recruiting approach, just as far as bringing in high school guys yeah. versus portal guys? Because obviously, you guys came in late, so it's kind of hard to decide what the kind of formula you want to build this first class with. Yeah, it's it's always the same formula. Bring in guys that you think fit you, fit you your part, your 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 type. You know, fit the program, the good guys, the good the guys that fit you. Personality-wise, work ethic-wise, it's always the same. It's just a lot easier now because of the portal, and you have a bigger pool to choose from. But yeah, you know, you want you always want some some high school guys. If you just think about it, like the NFL, like maybe the high school guys are draft picks, the portal guys might be free agents. But you still need the right kind of people in the program. So yeah, we we did a little bit of both. Yeah, you had a chance to work with Garrett McGuire at a couple different places. Yeah. Yes. And, and now your, your DBs will be going against his receivers in practice. What do you think of him as a young guy breaking in uh, the, way, the way that, that Coach Wolf's giving him a shot to? Yeah, I, I would say we, we're, we're lucky to have Garrett. Garrett's a football brain. Garrett is one of the smartest people that I've been around. Uh, myself and Garrett wake up every day at 4.30 and work out. He is a grinder. You'll hear a lot of chirping between him and I. He's competitive. You know, I'm probably going to have to school him a little bit, but just because I am who I am and he is who he is, DB's always over receivers. But we're lucky to have Garrett. Uh, he, he's going to help us tremendously. Like, if you look at him, he is smart. He is relatable. He cares about his guys. His father's a head coach at Texas Tech. He's been a quarterback his entire life. And as you know, quarterbacks are always in leadership position. When you're a freshman quarterback, they don't say, hey, don't yell at the senior. Whatever, right? It, you, you're just a leader, and he's a leader. Absolutely, we're happy. I'm, I'm happy to have him. Yeah, Luke, Luke Mullen from Lincoln Journal Star. What conversations have you had with Tony White about how he wants your defensive backs to play in the system? Yeah, me, uh, Coach White, and myself, we have very similar v views of how the secondary should look. He's gonna want them to play hard, be technically sound, and make plays, and that's it. That's it. That's it. That's, that's how we want to do it. So yeah, I've been with Coach White a lot. I'm excited to work with Coach White. Coach White's really bright, really, really bright. But he is, he is not too bright where he doesn't listen. You know, he, he wants to hear our input. You know, he's going to make his decisions based on his decisions. But I love Coach White. I'm excited to work with him. Yeah, uh, EJ uh, Zach Carpenter in Nebraska. Yeah. EJ uh, had talked about the competition within the staff when it comes to recruiting. Yeah. And you talked about the competition just with Garrett. Yeah. When it comes to the recruiting competition within the staff, why is that important? And is that the trickle down effect from Max? He just as competitive in that regard as you guys? Yeah, that's one of the core principles of, of our program competitive. You want to be competitive at everything. You know, I like to look at myself as one of the 10 percenters, at least in my brain. I, will, I, will, I want to be better at everything. And I don't really want to lose at anything either. So if there's something that I'm not good at, I need to work at it. So. I want to compete at everything. I, I want a group that competes at everything. I want tough players. We want hardworking players. So we have to be that as a staff. You know, everything goes from top down. That's what coach is. That's why coach has been successful. He's extremely competitive. Kevin, Kevin Susan, Channel 10 here in town. Uh, it looks like you're really active on social media. Yeah. Are you able to decode all of coach rules and, yeah. and tweets? No. You, to be honest, I don't even know if coach can. <laughs> Sometimes. But no, no, coaches, 
Co Coach has his messages, and uh, I kind of stay away from him. I'm, I'm just happy to be back on social media. I, I was dormant for three years. Uh, you don't really do that in the NFL. It's just it's been good, and it's so fun because all the interaction with the fans. Like I like it. even when they give me bats, like they they yell at me. So I'm good. I'm still good. You know, I'm excited about it. I never had this kind of support. You know, no offense to anywhere that I've been. It's just this amount of care for the program, for all sports, for educate, just in general. Like the end is. It's national. Like I go to airports, every airport. Go Big Red. I'm like, all right, I guess. But yeah, it's been great. Like I, I'm, I'm excited. Like, this is a great place. This is a great place. That's why our recruiting class is what it is. It's the place. You know, it's the place, and they believe in the place. So that's been good. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there seems to be a lot of clarity about what Coach Rule believes about not only the kind of football he wants to play, but practice. Um, World views, all that is that yeah. collected in a like in a in a manifest, like in a manual anywhere, or do you, or do you just sort of intuitively know it? Like, and when when people join his staff, what do they what do they have to have that that you and DJ and other Yeah, no, I would say it's not by accident that we all have the same views. Coach is like I said, coach is brilliant, right? There is not one human on our staff that doesn't belong or that doesn't deserve it. Like, coach is not going to hand out the DB job to a friend. You know, he'll have to, that person will have to think like coach and work hard and care about. Number one, before anything else, they'll have to care, genuinely care about the players that they'll coach. Coach is not having it. And I wouldn't have it any other way because I'm a relationship guy. Like, I don't, I don't separate anything. I am a person to person relationship kind of guy. I don't care about how good you are. That doesn't affect how I treat you as a person. So that's what coach, you know, that's a part of his beliefs and that we all believe that. And you better be hard working. Is that like written down or like? Yeah, it's written down in coach's brain. Yeah. And if you ever display something that's not written, opposite of what, he'll let you know about it. You, get, you guys get nice coach rule. I don't always get nice coach rule, but it helps. It helps. Just the biggest thing about coach is he gonna hold, he, he'll hold, our, hold everyone accountable, you know, and we all need that. That's why when you want to lose weight, you go get a personal trainer. You know, you need to be held accountable. Not, you know, you, you don't do it all on your own. So, yeah. What is not, not nice coach rule like? Not nice coach rule? I just hope you never see him. <laughs> I hold that one for me. You just, you never ask that question that gets him not nice. Or make that comment that gets him not nice.